had a cute little laugh. <laughs> oh, my Lanta. My Lanta. Yeah, my Lanta. My, my, my Santa. <laughs> oh, remember when I was telling you, um, about what happened to my uh, sister? <laughs> um, how she gave the kids menu to the little person? <laughs> Okay, sure. You don't remember? God, you don't no, remember. no, I do. I do remember. I'm just like, where are you going with this? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I just remembered this. So, like, uh, remember you were like, oh my god, grow a spine. So I was like, well, the menus are heavy, so they bring the menus first before they. Yeah, grow a spine. Down. The menus are not heavy. <laughs> okay, well. Um, Unless your menu weighs the... like five pounds, at which point it's like, what is on your menu? What is it made of? Are you handing them like a, a slab of stone with the <laughs> with the menu etched into it? <laughs> like, this, well, like, like, some... <laughs> is is it the Ten Commandments <laughs> that you're serving up at this restaurant? <laughs> because like some of the menus, like uh, like they're like they're made out of like wood, like they're ridiculously heavy, like it's just so okay. stupid. But even yeah. if they're made out of like, like processed wood. <laughs> Like, what are you putting no, in no, those menus? No, they're heavy. These things are actually heavy. Like, uh, you, don't under you don't understand, okay? I, I understand. And, and I have been to restaurants before. I have been to, like, <laughs> rural restaurants before where they do this kind of thing. The, oh, those menus they, may be a little hefty compared to, like, normal menus. But they are not so heavy that you cannot carry them for less than a minute as you walk the patrons to their table. We got little bitty arms, okay? Oh, oh yeah, okay. little bitty like, arms. You can lift up five pounds. <laughs> okay, okay, well, like, the, remember I was like, I don't know how the restaurant is set up. Okay, well, it's two stories. So that's why, because they have to, like, Okay, even down. so, oh, it's sorry. <laughs> it's not so you can't carry an extra five pounds up and down the stairs. Imagine how people who weigh, like, 300 pounds feel as they carry their entire weight upstairs. I mean, hey, listen. Okay, when, when you... I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I just asked her. I was like, how, what is the layout? <laughs> I, I'm, just, I'm just, I'm telling you, I don't, it doesn't matter what excuses she tries to give as freaking pathetic. <laughs> They're heavy. <laughs> and it's not just her. It's like everybody does it. So like. I, no. Yeah, they're fucking lazy bums. <laughs> I'm oh, all for gotta, workers yeah, being paid for, but that doesn't mean that you should not be doing the work. <laughs> like, do, 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 actually do do the job. Like, seriously. <laughs> oh my god, I, I gotta screen record this and send it to her. <laughs> uh, she's gonna, she's gonna be like, <laughs> you don't understand. She's gonna be like me. You don't understand. <laughs> I can't lift the freaking I can't lift the dumbbell, man. It's so heavy. Oh, I did you did you make little tiny weeny arms? We got a little T Rex arms that can't I can't lift the menu. To be fair, okay. Give me a fucking we break, both man. You both have tiny T-Rex arms, okay? Like, I don't know what to tell you. We're just genetically, like, messed up, okay? <laughs> you would have to have the t rexiest of arms. <laughs> you would have to, like, actually have a genetic d birth deformity for it to be a valid complaint. Okay, well, I do. And she has <laughs> rheumatoid arthritis, so... <laughs> We're both, like... So, like, have mercy on her soul. Oh, shit. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just too busy cracking up, okay? Okay, focus. <laughs> uh, but but everybody else, I don't know, everybody else maybe needs to grow a spine. I don't know. Maybe everybody else needs to grow a spine. <laughs> yes. It, it's not like every waitress in that restaurant or waiter is, is has... Uh, health problems that make it so, so that it's borderline impossible or whatever to carry these fucking menus up a flight of stairs. 
but but I do understand because like if you're um you know working like twelve straight hours and like you barely have time to go to the restaurant or restaurant you barely have time to go to the restroom you know like okay the thing that's exhausting about that though is not the menu carrying the thing that's it's exhausting just like an extra is burden. is so if you can is, like is, get is, one thing out the way you're really not like actually lifting all of that all that much like weight off your shoulders so to speak when you're not carrying those menus because the what's predominantly making you exhausted is having to carry your entire body weight on your legs like standing up for that extended period of time and plus or and plus or minus five pounds is not gonna make that oh. much of a fucking difference when you weigh 150 plus. I mean, she weighs like 100, so uh, yeah. You, okay, even if you weigh 100 pounds, it's literally 5%. <laughs> mm, mm. She's, she's, a, she's a little bitty, okay? She's a little bitty. Have mercy on her soul, okay? Where is Eugen's? Is that his name? That's not his name. That's like another anime character I'm thinking of. Also, yes, it is Eugen. Also, oh, Eugen is female. Oh, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Also, Eugen is Urban Nightmare. You are currently looking through Urban Plague. Oh, that's why I'm like. Well, you no, well, you're now only looking through Urban Plague. I was indicating you. You had all of the cards available to look at, and you were in the oh. Urban Plague section because it, it's, it is newest at the top, or latest in the story, I should say, at the top. Scroll down, and, and you were in Urban Plague. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay. Um, well, let's hope this one is in a, a Pinocchio. Yeah. I remember being able to brute force this one. Okay. Well, that, uh, but, uh, that sounds to say it's like a good idea. It's, it's just something you can do. <laughs> okay, well, I guess we'll figure it out. Also, I'm dropping significantly less frames this time. This is excellent. <laughs> I don't know why I was dropping so many frames the past couple times I was doing we were doing this. Uh, what are we... The creaking wooden noise it makes. That's icky. Pinocchio. It was a children's tale about a kid whose nose grew long after telling a lie, I think. I think I read about it somewhere. A wooden puppet with a long nose. Copies the patron librarian's combat bookshelf? Deck. Deck, yes. Okay. Play as a page that contains a lie every two to three scenes, which shows false information. <gasps> what a bitch. Caught long nose. When clashing against lying is bad, while lying, all dice lose for power, huh? Yes. Whoa, this sounds like a lot to remember. Whoa. It sounds like a I would have to see what's going on, maybe. It's, it, no, it's really not that complicated. Uh, periodically, oh, yeah. throughout the fight, he's gonna play a combat page that is a- That's gonna say lying is bad. <clears throat> no. So it has your deck. It has Roland's deck. Periodically through the fight, one of the pages it will use will, contains information that is not the same as the corresponding page that is in Roland's deck. Mm -hmm. You are supposed to clash against that page with a page titled, Lying is Bad, because it is lying. Um, if you do not do that, then it will... Uh, uh, do a fuckload of damage. It'll too. fuck you over. Yeah, it'll, it'll fuck you <laughs> up. Um, and I think that's why do we both why do we both say fuck at the same the time? Last ones do. I really like it's been snipped out. You gain more strength with busted. Um, right? It, yeah, it'll so it'll really fuck you up if you don't bust the lie. If you do bust the lie, then you uh can fuck up them for a scene. Okay. Uh. Okay. It's, a, it's pretty straightforward, relatively easy fight. Um, it's just the main thing is that it's going to use cards that you also that use. That Roland has. Yeah. It just also, notably, does not know how to use those cards.
Okay, well, this one is... Yeah. Mm, why does it have a three at the top? Uh, to it, changed three the zero? Cost, it changed the cost of the card to cost three. Um, that mm. might be... it. so rude. Well, that, that's worse for it. <laughs> Not that it matters, considering it gets its max light back every scene. Uh, it might be the effect of one of the smaller puppets, because you never looked at those. Oh, no, I didn't. I forgot about these bozos. Um... All those characters live, of cost of pages oh. in the hands of all librarians is randomized each scene. So, you know, some of your powerful cards might be cheap, and some of your cheap and some of your cheap weak cards might be expensive. Oh, that's so rude. But okay. Oh, yeah, I forgot the light thing. Uh, well, I mean... What light? I mean, I guess... Um, that you only get, like, uh... I only have three librarians. I'm not gonna get a whole lot of light. That's not right? exactly how that works. Um, okay, well, I think I know what I'm talking about, but if I'm explaining it wrong, it's another thing. No, the maximum emotion level that you can reach is dependent on the level of the floor that you are using. Before you do any floor battles, uh, your maximum emotion level is 1. After you do a floor battle, it becomes 2, and 3, and so on. The Keter floor, so far, has completed two floor battles. That means your maximum emotion level is three, which means your maximum light capacity for each of the characters you are currently using is going to be six. Once you reach that emotion level. Hmm. Got it. The amount of librarians you have available to you is... Uh, a combination of how many floor battles you've done and at what point the floor appears in the story. Because all of the first five floors that you can use start off with one librarian. But the three middle floors start off with three librarians. And I do not remember if the uh, upper floors start with three or four librarians want to say that they start with four but I don't quote me on that and then it changes all the cost if that's so rude of the cards what? Okay, well, if you're gonna make this one zero... Bang, bang! You like my sound effects? Sure. <sighs> the main thing game. I'm thinking about right now is that there's really no reason to think all that hard about this. <sighs> well... Let me... Um... Uh... Okay, well that's okay. Now I'm like, um. Oh wait, I only have one light here. Oh. Oh. Right. <laughs> yeah, ha ha! No, thank you. You know that sound effect? No, I do not. You mean you've never 
heard Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild? Mm, no. Damn. That's like the permanent sound that gets etched into your brain after you see it, do or see a single playthrough of that game. Yaha! Mm. Yeah, I've n never uh, played it. Yeah. Oh, by the way, the game will also tell you which scene in which a uh, a lion card will be played. There'll be a bunch of like visual effects on the screen. Well, I have a lying as bad in my hand, but like... Y yes, when Pinocchio is lying, it it will indicate... Oh, it'll be, that oh, there there'll are... be a bunch of pretty yeah, stuff. Yeah, there'll be a bunch of like, woohoo gobble yuck, clogging up the screen. Woohoo gobble yuck. <laughs> it's keen to learn as you usual. Said? Would you like to see me learn? Is that what you said? Uh, also, this abnormality, abnormality does not appear in Lobotomy Corporation, so I have nothing further to add. Oh. So it was just, like, random? <laughs> not random. <laughs> okay, what I mean is, like, random in the game. Like, it's no, just, like, No, not random. <laughs> it was in As addition. in, like, they, they made it and put it in here is what I mean, you know? Yeah, yes. It was an addition to the game. Like the wooden creaking. Which one is the one? Um... Yeah, da, 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 da. Remove all dice from page and copy the dice on the opponent's page. Okay. Yes. Which uh, typically gives you the advantage because you have power buffs. Uh, whereas the opponent does not. Wait, so he's gonna copy what I have on the page and use it? Yes, right. it is basically going to be that he uses a copy of your page against you. Let me just use this, the one with the lowest cost. I, it, it doesn't, it doesn't really make a difference. Doesn't, doesn't make a difference? Uh, again, whatever he clashes against is going to be the, effectively the same card that you're using. But, again, this usually puts you at an advantage because you have buffs to your card power. Oh, the passives, you mean. Okay. Yes. Okay. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. You also, but you do have to look at what buffs they currently have, which is two endurance, which means 
if you are using any defense die against the learn card, then it will actually have the advantage. Because its defensive die have plus two power this turn. So you are going to want to use a card with offensive die when clashing against it. And no, that's not listed in his passives. It is literally the buff that he has. The blue arrow. With the two next to oh. it. Oh. Which, I the reason he has it, little. I'm pretty sure is related to the passives of the other small Pinocchio. Hmm. Now, all of these have defensive die. Well, I guess I use one with the least amount. I, f I feel like this entire game consists of me explaining everything to you like you're five. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, I don't know what you want from me, okay? Take it very, like, slow and explicitly. I'm like, I don't, like, I'm, like, I'm so sorry, okay? I do not live up to your standards, okay? And your expectations. You're nearly at the climax of the game. Fucking, like, <laughs> <laughs> understand how it works now. Uh, uh, do we have any cards? Okay, like... Well, no, maybe... Uh, well, they don't have any. Oh, well, no, they got like six charge. Oh my god. Away. You can also pan the screen left to right by clicking and dragging. Mm hmm. It's just like. With the amount of things that I have explained to you, you should be compared to somebody who is playing this game blind, a, a freaking master. <laughs> because it, it, I'm not going to argue with you. I refuse to argue with you. So I'm just not going to say anything. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to be extra nice. I mean, I do the little guys like, uh, <sighs> Remember, he's gonna use the same card again. Well, it's not like you redirected him, anyways. What was that? Uh, I bumped my mic. I I, oh. I turned my gain up. I was looking at my levels. I was like, damn, I'm pretty quiet because I am instead of like sitting up in my chair and speaking into the mic, I'm, I'm, I'm reclined. I'll put a reset upon attacking a different target. 
Yes. It does. Congratulations, you are literate. <laughs> uh, sir, I'm gonna... Sir, don't push it. Don't push it. You're pushing your luck, kid. Oh, fun. Yeah. So what's he, what's he lying about? What do you mean it's a lying? Okay. Uh... Target the page that you think he's lying about with lying is bad. Well, but... yeah, I know that, but I'm like... Okay, then it's this one, right? All right. Right? Right. I feel like... Okay. Cool. So today, I went grocery shopping, and when I go grocery shopping, I wear my headphones. So I'm like, mm -hmm. I wanna, I wanna vibe while I'm shopping, and I'm not exactly interested in like uh, just miscellaneous people being miscellaneous people around me. It's like who fucking cares? Uh, but on my way out of the store. I was, as I was pushing my cart back to my car, some, some bitches drove up next to me with their window rolled down and called for the attention of me, the guy with his headphones on, <laughs> so that they could ask me if I needed some Jesus in my life. Uh-oh. What'd you say? Now, thankfully, in real life, I am a relatively polite person. Although... Oh, no, really? Who would've although, thunk it? Although, some of that stems from the fact that I do not have the wits to be uh sassy uh very quickly I, I cannot i cannot quickly come up with witty comebacks uh so i was annoyed and i was like no and they asked me if i if i knew anybody else who needed jesus and i was also like no <laughs> Or if, I, there was a, or if they knew anywhere I, they could go to find somebody who needs you. Because apparently they came from Arizona all the way up to fucking New York. So that they could spread Jesus. Just by the fact that these are like young women who looked like they were in their early 20s. <laughs> oh, so that's weird. <laughs> hey. 
hand, I thought about it afterwards, and my thoughts were basically, you and your god can go fuck themselves. <laughs> Organized religion is a fucking sham, you are charlatans. <laughs> and then I also sent out a tweet when I got home that said, anytime a missionary comes within five meters of me, I get leprosy. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that was that was my story time. <laughs> what an eventful day I had. <laughs> it's the only thing that happened all day. Ah, <laughs> uh, that is beautiful. Thank you for the story time. Yeah. Oh, so we're still lying. It, it also would have, in retrospect, been an apt time to to flip them off, to to flip somebody off. But I, I have actually never done so. I've never actually flipped anyone off before. Hmm. That's too bad. Are we still lying about something? No. Like, we, no. I was like, that, the, that I was visual... like, what's all this? Uh, that's to indicate that's to indicate you called them out correctly, and so they're weakened. Oh god, I got it, got it. I was like, what is happening? Because I, I was like, because those pages aren't wrong. <clears throat> Anyways, it's been over a week since we last did this, so I've got a lot of fun facts on my calendar that I can I can um, elucidate. Joy. Uh, the, the the one we left off on was the one about Lincoln turning down elephants. It was. Oh, elephants. Elef elephants. Oops. I was thinking of uh, the cocaine hippos. Uh, it's now time for your meditation moment. Try the 478 breathing technique. Inhale through your nose for 4 seconds. Hold your breath for 7 seconds. And exhale through your mouth for eight seconds. Repeat this pattern three more times. I feel like I breathe like that. Actually, I don't breathe like that naturally. I naturally breathe where I inhale for like 15 seconds and then exhale for like 15 seconds. <laughs> yeah, that does sound accurate, actually. Mm -mm. I, I, I just breathe really slowly because... It's nice. I was like, because trauma? Do you have trauma? <laughs> no. <laughs> <clears throat> so here's the fun fact for Saturday and Sunday, January the 20th and 21st. At Sean Lennon's birthday party in 1984, Steve Jobs gave him a new Macintosh and demonstrated Mac Paint. Andy Warhol was mesmerized and said, Can I try? But he didn't get it and waved the mouse around like a magic wand. After Jobs taught him how to use it, he got excited and said, I made a circle! What? Uh, I know Andy yeah. Warhol is a, is a famous painter. I don't know who Sean Lennon is, though. Yeah, I don't know who that is either. For 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 that daily extra, as they're called it, they they provided a uh, grocery list where it's like here's a bunch of categories of things, and I and you're supposed to write down what you need to buy next to them. So that when you go grocery shopping, that's fucking stupid. Just use like a regular notepad. <laughs> when you go grocery shopping. Well, if you need to make a list, then you can use a regular notepad or like a sticky note or what have you. Um, you don't need to use the back of your ca uh, tear off calendar. Oh, okay. I was like, so confused for a second. Okay, yeah. Like, why the back of a tear off calendar? It's so weird. It's weird to say. There it's are. So for Monday, 
The Mimic Octopus impersonates sea snakes, soulfish, lionfish, and other poisonous creatures to ward off predators. It's so smart that it knows which animal represents the greatest threat to nearby predators and mimics at least nine different species. That is, uh, pretty neat. The animal world is pretty wild. It's pretty wild. Here is some, here's a, your trivia question. What country has the most natural lakes? What country? Yes. I, I would guess, um, Canada. I have no idea. Well, we'll find out after our next fact for Tuesday. The number of shark attacks may have recently increased, but your individual risk of being bitten has plummeted since the 1950s. The increase in bite reports is due to coastal populations rising by the millions and the hundreds of thousands more people diving and surfing in the ocean. Which is that same fucking, like, narrative, like, Oh, crimes are increasing! Well, it's like, maybe nominally, <laughs> because population is increasing, but, like, the rates have decreased. I actually don't think crime is a good example of that, but it's the same idea. Mm -hmm. Uh, so... Yeah, I was correct. The country with the most natural lakes is Canada. Big country, lots of water. A lot of trees, too. Here's your cooking tip. Add a generous amount of salt to the water when boiling pasta to bring out the flavor. The flavor oh, wow, of really? flour. Because that is what pasta is made out of. I'm joking, of course. Even, like... even though that's literally true, I, I imagine that it does like have good taste to it. I'm so confused. Here's your fun fact for Wednesday. Human beings have been hunter-gatherers for 99% of their history. Wow. It's almost like evolution happens very slowly, uh, but technological advancement happened very quickly. Yeah. Pretty crazy, huh? Yeah, I'm very, I'm very uncharitable to these fun facts because a lot of them come across as like fucking duh. <laughs> So, which is why when the octopus one came up, I was like, yeah, that's actually pretty neat. This is like, I didn't know that, and it didn't seem incredibly obvious. <laughs> Whereas, like, this one's like, <laughs> fucking duh. Of, of course. Of course we've been hunter-gatherers for 99% of our history. <laughs> we've only had, like, developed societies for, like, 15,000 years or so. Uh... And it's yeah, not like, recently. and it's not like Homo, Homo sapiens has only existed as a species for those fifteen thousand years. This has existed for much, much longer than that. Yo, fervent beats, unga bunga mode. <laughs> You're pretty close to the end, so it wouldn't be that big of a deal. You should die. We love unga bunga mode. Sour lemon has to die. Um, oh well. So, nice snow and sour lemon. Uh, the daily extra for that day is uh, celebrate National Compliment Day by giving someone a genuine compliment. Not only will it boost their mood, but you'll feel happier too. Well, that was Wednesday, which was what, like th three days ago? Yeah, three days ago. Um,. Which means it's not National Compliment Day, which means, I don't know, well, actually, it's Sunday now, so it's been it's four days ago. 
Uh, which means it's not National Compliment Day, which means I don't have to give anyone a compliment. In fact, I'm going to coin today as National Insult Day. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> well... And I've already, uh... I've already made my, I've already done my quota, you know? <laughs> I, I, I said that you had the intelligence of a five-year-old earlier. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, like, yeah, you already giving me an insult today. And you know what? I'm not going to insult you because I'm a nice person, so. <laughs> You're welcome. I want to be the bigger person right now, okay? Because I'm the adult. I'm older than you, so I have to be the bigger person. So. You're welcome. God bless. Uh, for Thursday, uh, a fun fact is when J.K. Rowling wrote the end of the Harry Potter series, Dear I finished Lord. it, bawled my eyes out, went to the hotel minibar. They had one of those pathetic little half bottles of champagne. It's not very rock and roll. Anyway, downed that. I should have done this in a British accent, but I don't have a good British accent. She learned. It's just. <laughs> I just just, if this is what she, like, said or quoted herself as having d done, this is just, like, an incredibly British way of, like, phrasing all of this. <laughs> I finished it, bawled my eyes out, went to the hotel minibar. They had one of those pathetic little hot half bottles of champagne. It's not very rock and roll. Anyway, down to that. Went home covered in mascara and a little bit drunk. And then I said, trans women can't use women's bathrooms. Trans women aren't women, and what else did you say? And trans women, like, want to rape kids or some shit? Like, <laughs> I don't know. And then I said trans, the trans community is grooming our children. So yeah, you yeah. need to be stopped. <laughs> Man, and I love the Harry Potter books. I have tons of Harry Potter stuff from when I was a kid. Like, my niece, you know, bought me a bunch of Harry Potter stuff. Like, I went to Universal Studios, like, six years ago. Yeah, but this is Harry before everybody stuff. realized that trans yeah. people are, like, actually real. <laughs> and and then yeah. J.K. Rowling like, outed herself as, like, being awful. <laughs> yeah, and since then, like, I, have, I haven't bought anything, like, uh, Harry Potter. Because I'm just like, god damn it, J.K. Rowling. Like, why well, you gotta be such a bitch? It's like, what? ruining my childhood, bitch. Is the, the age demographic of people currently in their 20s are the people, and, and maybe early 30s, are the people mm -hmm. who grew up when Harry Potter was releasing as a series and became a phenomenon. And that was in... I would wait you know, in line for the, the Harry Potter books, you know? So, and that yeah. was in the early, mid-2000s. Uh, and you know who nobody acknowledged as being like real and valid in the early mid 2000s trans people <laughs> yep. are you serious that wasn't enough no nah, i still oh got god. still got fucking 10 health left 20 health left whatever 20. oh my god why would you um, bitch ass i'm gonna you even I'm, caught you in your life oh. i'm gonna give you some uh books and some authors and you're supposed to match the book with the author so we're gonna start with the book Joy Luck Club. Uh, your your list of authors to choose from are Jane Austen, Louisa May Alcott, Tony Morrison, Amy Tan, and Harper Lee. Yeah, hey, it's not the first one. Uh. I don't think it's the I can, second one. I can, I, can, I can go to another book. Your stuff. Yeah, go to another one. Uh, Pride and Prejudice. Same oh, authors. That's fucking Jane Austen. <laughs> okay. Um, to Kill a Mockingbird. Your choices uh, are... I can listen. Your choices are Louisa May Alcott. Tony Morrison, Amy Tan, Harper Lee. Harper Lee, right? Uh, next is Song of Solomon. Louisa May Alcott, Tony Morrison, Amy Tan. Jamie Morrison? Tony Morrison. Tony? Yes. 
the final book is Little Women. Is that by Amy? I mean, we'll find out later. Uh, so now you have the Joy Luck Club, the, <clears throat> the Joy Luck Club, and the Song of Solomon, which are between Louisa May Alcott and Amy Tan. Because you said Little Women was Toni Morrison, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Mm. I feel like. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, I have no idea, bro. Well, you got Pride and Prejudice and To Kill a Mockingbird, correct? The oh, book. no. The Song of Solomon. Oh, God. Was, I think that's by Toni Morrison. Okay. So now you have uh, The Joy Luck Club and Little Women between Louisa May Alcott and Amy Tan. Amy Ton is probably the Joy Luck Club. Well, it looks like you got every single one of those correct. Congratulations. <laughs> okay. I guess all that thinking paid off. Yeah, that's where all my brain powers goes, remembering authors. Like, <laughs> the fuck? For, <laughs> for Friday, which is Australia Day, January 26th. Uh, skeleton flowers have such delicate petals that they become transparent when it rains. Now, I'm not, sure, I'm not sure what that has to do with delicacy. But, sure. <laughs> I guess it's neat. <laughs> it tra transparency really has to do with thinness and constitution. Constituency. Yep. Um, okay. This has and, to be enough. and also uh, spectral absorbance. If it doesn't absorb any visible light, then it's going to be transparent no matter how thick it is. But something can be thin. And start. 커피 중독자의 담배 중독자. 그리고 이 퍼만 꼬맹이까지. 우리가 네 제안에 동의했다고 이렇게 서로 인사하는 자리를 마련해 준 거야? 착각하지 마, 엔젤라. 우린 네 편이 아니야. 목적이 같을 뿐이지. 저 시커먼 멀대는 완전히 엔젤라 편인 것 같지만. 하라는 대로 열심히라는 피고용. Yes, true. <laughs> She's addicted to sharp tonguedness. Kugamunde. <laughs> Tugutugunarikirupikiti. <laughs> She's so selfish. Nega <laughs> 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 Yeah, 
가버렸네. <웃음> no, just a deuces. <웃음> she got. She had to get herself out of there. She got pissed. Pissed. <웃음> 그럼 그럼 나랑 티페리트도 게브라를 위해서 얼마나 많은 말을 해주는데 저기 헤세드 I mean she was beaten in the argument that's why she fucking left 그럼 실례할게 별로 달갑지 않은 자리였지만 모두가 모여서 뜻깊은 자리였어 곧 터지겠네 가볼게 놀란 음, yeah who wants to be confronted you know nobody does 저 둘은 항상 저래 <laughs> Angela needs an intervention. Bonnie Cabraga Honeco, I know so. May you turn on Danica. Salvarane Chungchuman, Tanjan Togadevicuman. Good to retire. Nigga Chungja Winnago. Nega Malijan and Yon, Yogs of Busukurin al Jurago. Credo Naram Soro, Chai Chingo to Isnica. Domuna Pugasinga Kajimara to Simone. Sawang Bonnie. And she's completely capable of doing so. <laughs> Ew, there's still so many. Yes. Which one do we I mean, I guess very there. technically, you only have to do three more uh, to move on in the story. But honestly, I think you should just hash them all out right now yeah because they're just gonna pile up and i'm gonna be sad yes uh, especially after you unlock the upper floors and it's like jesus christ <laughs> it's got even more to do i'll show you this one you're gonna do no, nut haven't done this one in a while yeah i feel like i haven't done this you're one you're gonna do the nut shack it's the yeah. nut shack it's the nut shack Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I'm gonna be sleepy. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're sleepy. <laughs> I'm the one who's consistently been going to bed at like. 8 or 9 p.m. for the entire week, <laughs> and it's now 1.30 a.m. <laughs> yeah, I've been going to have my sleep schedule has just been so off. Like, I'm like, what is life? What is happening? I don't know what's going on. I just have not been able to sleep well at all. So, like, I have this, um, like my brain at night, well, my brain constantly is just going and going and going and going and at, at night too. Like I just can't shut off my brain. My brain just like doesn't shut off ever. And it's like been really bad this week. So like, I don't know, I can't sleep. <laughs> so here's a, here's a fun fact. Polar bears have transparent fur. It just looks white what? because of the way it reflects light. And to that, I have to call some fucking shenanigans as to uh -oh. how this is being presented. I can't claim to know, like, how exactly polar bear fur works, so to speak. But that's not really how color <laughs> and light and transparency work. Google it. If you're using my computer right now, uh, you do have a phone, it, my love. It, no, I don't. Uh, I threw it out the window. Um, I'm gonna throw you out the window. <laughs> there, there's if, my insult for the day. If something has the appearance of being white, that means that mm -hmm. it is reflecting uh, visible light all visible light effectively in the entire spectrum um but it is not refracting that light it is simply reflecting it um 
so but to be transparent the light has to be passing through the thing which means it has to not reflect the light so it cannot be definitionally simultaneously white and transparent <laughs> but what just... about the surrounding like snow and stuff and the glaciers does that have anything the... to do with it the snow similarly is reflecting all of the light that is all, visible light in particular that is being beamed onto it so that is why it is white it is also extremely bright because it, it is taking like the pretty intense sunlight and and not absorbing anything and just beaming it back into your eyes which is why this is like the main reason why it sucks um. to drive in winter in snowy areas uh it's just because it's like super bright outside and it's like blinding and you can get sunburned and that's why you should wear sunscreen even when there's snow outside yeah yeah, yeah nobody cares um i care i don't want to get skin cancer hello yeah, yeah whatever if you if you're literally if you are outside and there's snow outside it is cold enough that you are not exposing skin to begin with <laughs> at least not significant amounts of skin and you're not spending significant amounts of time where that's an issue but your face it's like a very silly concern and uh, then like if you're in texas and like you don't really have winter clothes like like, like here in texas, texas you're worried it's... about getting sunburned year round because the sun is constantly out and constantly beaming you and you don't have clouds ever in the way like, I live, in oh, fucking, okay. I live in fucking New York State. It's cloudy, like, 60% of the year. I don't have to worry about getting sunburned most of the time. <laughs> um, okay. Library, the Library of Congress says, um, that, oh, okay. It says, most sources indicate that the long, coarse guard hairs, which protect the plush, thick undercoat, are hollow and transparent. The thinner hairs of the undercoat are not hollow, but they, like the guard hairs, are colorless. Yes, colorless meaning white. Yeah, but the guard hairs are hollow and transparent. Yeah, so some of the hair is transparent and yeah. some of the hair is white. It is white. So yeah. it is, again, not accurate to say that they have transparent fur some of their fur is transparent some of their fur is not <laughs> okay so now you're being like a stickler about it okay take it up with the library of congress or even i could actually see it as all of their fur being transparent and it is the light reflecting off of their skin that is giving it the appearance of being white, if not for two things. First of all, their skin does not appear white. It appears like a sort of like pinkish color and or tan, or, you know, common animal skin color. And you know, some of that might be the like blood uh, color, giving it coloration. But it is. even so, that still means that the fur should be the same if it was entirely transparent the fur would still be the same color as the skin uh, because it is the light that is being reflected off of the skin that is passing through the fur and into your eyes so you would yeah. you, you would the, it would the fur would look as though it is um skin colored which is not the case it looks white which means some of it must be reflecting light Anyways. Oh, this is cool. It says that in the 1970s when they had uh, polar bears like in zoos that some of them were turning green and it was because uh, there was like algae I guess in the areas where the polar bears were and the algae was like inside of the hairs. So it's making the polar bears look green. I mean, that would that would have been an interesting fun fact to put on this tear-off calendar but didn't put that put on something stupid the algae more than likely came from the pond waters and the bears enclosures so you're welcome for the fun fact <laughs> should make one of these calendars instead 
I should. I, I am, I'm full of lots of useless information, honestly. That's where my brain power goes is um, useless information and not useful information like this game, you know? Yeah, definitely. I'm gonna fuck you up here in a minute, okay? You just watch your back. You just walk your, watch your back, sis, okay? I'm gonna get you one of these days. El Re Reune, not Ruine. Reune. This fucking thing has such a fucking weird ass name. The abnormality only takes damage from the librarian with the laurel wreath status. Yeah, which, which I believe you'll get. One of them will get it after the first turn, and it's like your choice oh, okay. based on context. Um, the aroma is strong as ever. Its weapons you used to give off the same smell too. That's awful. Where's that deep force supposed to be? Maybe you will need something that can understand that thing. This thing fucking sucks in Lobotic Corporation, I remember. Oh yeah, because when it escapes, it fucking teleports around the facility. And you <laughs> only have like a handful of seconds to even attack it when it appears in some random ass location <laughs> before it teleports somewhere else again. And That's furthermore... And furthermore, its fucking counter decreases if you get a good work result or a bad work result. And so, like, you can't even... It, it's like, it, it is very difficult to work with it without accidentally uh, lowering its counter uh, due to the nature of uh, binomial odds. Um... And it's got like a low max counter count as well, so when you try to work with it, it just escapes all the time. You have to deal with this thing fucking teleporting around your facility like a jackass. <laughs> that sounds awful. <laughs> it's, it, it really, it really, it, it's, I mean, it's certainly far from the worst abnormality you can have in your facility. You can like not touch it and then like, or you can not work with it and not have to worry about it for the entire day, basically. Uh, for the most part, but it's like <laughs> obnoxious. <laughs> it is obnoxious when it escapes, which will inevitably happen if you have it in your facility, regardless of whether you work with it or not. Um, anyways, yeah, you, I don't know if you read all of the um, things in detail. I read this one that uh... this character this attacks only deal stagger damage, and if yeah. You are staggered. You die. You die. And the one who emerged from the earth is spawn next scene. This one I don't get. The one well, who emerged from the earth is spawn next scene. I, I guess I'll is, find out. It is. Well, no, it's one of those smaller people. Oh, it's one of these thingies? Yeah, you can see their name is, you know, one who emerged from the earth. <laughs> oh. Poor thought. Oh, shut the fuck up. Anyways. <laughs> Uh, only takes damage from the oh, la, 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 la. Starting from scene two, a petal blooms behind the abnormality at the start of each scene. Three petals have accumulated at the start of a scene. Remove all of them and use a mass attack. Bitch, what the fuck? Tears of oh, becoming staggered. Lose 40 HP. Remove all petals. This, this sounds like a fucking nightmare. I don't like this shit. I want to well, go okay. home. Keep reading. Keep reading. Don't just, don't no, just stop. Way. Don't just stop <laughs> reading because you read something that you didn't like, which isn't even like, like that, it. which isn't even that bad, honestly. Okay. All pedals start next scene. In addition, all I bring under 50% of their max dagger resist. Okay. Like, <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> you Take read, a, no damage you read a thing which a isn't even bad, and you were like, I don't like that, so I'm gonna not read the rest of its effects, and it's like, come on, like, you're asking to lose. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> okay. And um, what do the uh, other guys do? Uh, pfft. <sighs> okay. This character dies upon becoming staggered. Okay, so you stagger it and it flops dead. Okay. This character attacks only deals stagger damage to librarians. Librarian gets staggered, they instantly killed. Okay, and then they pop up. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Takes no damage from burn or bleed. Okay, well, I'm... Okay, I don't think any of them have... Okay, I don't think any of my people have burned. Okay. Um, uh, character dies upon my coming staggered. Okay. Cool beans. 
Oh, oh. Mm. Oh. <laughs> uh, so, okay, well, I... Okay, what the fuck are we doing? Um, give Laurel Wreath next scene. Cool. Thanks. Yes. What was that? What is that? What does that do again? You get to dictate who receives the Laurel Wreath. Oh, it's the only person that can deal damage to it. Oh, okay. Next scene? J permanently. This scene. Permanently? <gasps> or, or rather, until they die. Uh, whoever has the Laurel Wreath is the only one who can deal damage to El Ruina. Uh, that's, kind, that's, that's not nice. I don't like keeping that. Keeping in mind, it is weak to pierce and resistant to slash. Well, that's... Okay, we got wind pierce. <laughs> Energy cycle. Ah, oh, but man, it's got a big defense. Well, it's... You're not expected to do all that much damage to it this turn. Well, you're really not expected to do that much damage to this turn. Uh, in part because only the person who has the Laurel Reef can do damage to it. Currently, nobody has the Laurel Wreath. Only the person who you will have it clash with will obtain the Laurel Wreath. In other words, there is no use in having somebody you do not intend to give the Laurel Wreath to, to attack it. Oh, I, I thought, okay, I thought it was like, automatically, okay, this person has a Laurel Wreath, okay. No, you didn't. Okay. You were not giving the laurel wreath to everybody so long as they attack. No. Them. Okay, no. I thought. I thought it was this person was gonna get the laurel wreath. No, you get to choose because it only has speed one for the attack, so you can effectively force it to target whoever you want. Weak to Pierce, we'll just... Damn. Yeah. And then you can have the other guys attack the other things. So here's your final fun fact. That is for yesterday and today. The National Library of Sweden has a 16th century book that can be read six different ways. Its special uh -huh. six-fold back-to-back binding combines six different devotional texts into one book. That's interesting. Yeah, it is actually pretty interesting. Um, that's actually not exactly um, how this works. But there is a genre of fiction that works in a similar capacity and that it's um, structured in somewhat obtuse ways that you throughout the consumption of the fiction engage with the book uh, using uh, non-standard methods so mm -hmm. For example, a very famous example of this is a book called House of Leaves, I think is what it's called. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've heard uh, of that. Called the book... Book of TikTokers. Leaves, is it? Yeah. I think it's like House of Leaves, no? Yeah, I think it's House of Leaves. Um, yeah. Where throughout the book, it'll like ask you to go... It'll basically ask you to go to different sections of the book and read those sections in different ways than like conventional reading you know maybe it'll be upside down or maybe it'll be like rotated or maybe it'll be uh i don't know backwards mm -hmm. or maybe you'll have to like view it with a certain page in front of it or some shit like that i don't know 
I haven't actually read the House of Leaves, but it's my understanding that this is the sort of like way it functions. Yeah. And I think you can like turn the page in a different way. Oh, this is a range attack. Yeah, also, yes, also the Al Ruina uses ranged attacks. <coughs> so here's the story. It's a very short one. Mm -hmm. An abnormality that knows of spring's genesis and autumn's passing. Its surface is smooth as if it were ceramic. In the place where the abnormality's eyes should be, it is empty. The cracks and openings are instead filled with glowing plants. Uh, which, by the way, the original design for this creature is more, like, deer-like or horse-like. I think deer is probably closer than, than the human-like um, appearance you see now. <clears throat> El Ruine, a lovely one. A doll yearned to be human. It was adored by people, its people soulful. El Ruine, abandoned in a dark forest, its eyes stolen by crows lusting for glitter, its mind, life, and heart slowly withered away. El Ruine, lacking eyes but all-seeing, a human yearned to be a doll, bearing the hope to return to dust, it shall go back to the grove with all that desires to live. <coughs> That's it. That's it? That's it. That's it? That's it. Oh, look, it's a deer. Yeah, that's that's what it looks like originally. I don't like it. <laughs> it's a deer with a sombrero. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I think it's supposed to look like a garden hat, but... Uh, yeah, yeah. We'll take it's, 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 it's a garden hat, but I don't... Is that, is that what the name of that hat is just is, is it called a garden hat because if it has like a snappier no. name yeah exactly no. so i don't know the snappier name of it which is why <laughs> i called it a sombrero oh, a, um what it's like a sun hat or like a floppy hat i don't know what to call it it's a sombrero now it's a sombrero it, it's, it's in, instead of having the like beads and ropes hanging okay, down and the rest off of these the side, can it's got little guy. like plant moss hanging down the side. Yeah. And everybody else can attack these bros. Yes. And they will oh, die yeah, they only did. becoming staggered. Because they're little scrublets. You're a scrublet. A true. I love when I insult you and you just say true. Like, come on. I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna deny it when it's, when it's true. Come on. Insult me with something false and I'll say it's false. Okay. I mean, I don't know you, so I can't think of anything right now. Maybe next time. Hey, like you could... Maybe next time I'll come up with a lie. <laughs> I, I don't know why this was the first example to come. Covens my head, but like you could say something to the effect of I've had sex with a family member, and I'd be like, That's not true, <laughs> that <laughs> is slender <laughs> because of Minnie. I actually don't, I actually don't think it's because of Minnie, I think it's just like <laughs> I, I think that's just the state of my media consumption <laughs> summed up. <laughs> uh... <laughs> just too much incest. Uh, this is <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, did you watch the Witch and the Beast? Uh, I have not been keeping up with it. No, I'll I'll get around to it. Pretty good. Okay, I, cause I, I was I was okay then. I almost watched... I almost spoiled the uh, the newest episodes. Never mind. I've I've watched I've watched the episodes of other things, and I also watched the entirety of Zombie Land Saga recently. Um, oh. Right, so you know, I'll I'll get it. I'll get around to it. Get around to it. Zombie Land Saga, by the way, is fucking phenomenal. Yeah, I heard you gushing about it on uh, Twitter. Yes. Yeah. Gushing, gushing <laughs> about it. I, I guess. I guess se sending one tweet in which I say that I gave it a nine point five out of ten is 
is gushing about it. If I was really gushing right. about it, I would have sent like five plus tweets elaborating in detail the many things that I enjoyed about it. <laughs> well, yeah, I think by your standards, that's gushing, right? I mean, it is... It's high praise. <laughs> it, it is high praise by my standards to, to give it a 9.5. Uh, but I, I would not say that it's disgusting about it. Okay, I, have a, okay. I, I did have a variety of thoughts after the fact and, and during watching it. But at the end of it all, I was like, nah, I don't think any of these are worth, like, elaborating on in super extensive detail. It's just a fucking good show. I, I, the, the main thing that would be worth elaborating on is how excellently it does the musical numbers. Especially mm -hmm. the, the more it does the musical numbers, the better it gets at them. Some of those, some of the songs that it uses are fucking like certified bangers. I love oh, yeah, listening I to Lobotomy Corporation music. Oh my lord. Nice. I, actually, I don't... It, no, it is, it isn't Lobotomy Corporation music, but it uses some of the, like, sound effects and some of the... Um... Oh. What, there you go. What you oh. want to have it? Um... Uh, melody. From the lobotomy court music it's like an iteration it's an iteration on that music that's probably what the best way to call it is. oh i don't know what any of these do <laughs> <laughs> we never use this floor <laughs> Oh, this might be useful. On X six six. Yeah, I mean, you might still want to look at the other ones first, though. And against target, I think. Move all. That's just an. That's just an immediate effect. Yeah. It only happens once. Oh, that. You can check the state of everybody's stagger gauges by hitting hide. Um, it would not kill any opponents, and you are not particularly down bad on stagger. Um, although, uh, Oscar could use a little bit more. You'll probably be fine, though. What's stagger? It's the yellow bar. And then what's tentacular do? Also, very useful. Hmm. Especially since El Ruine only takes damage when you stagger it, and also when you stagger it, you prevent it from using its mass attack. Then I guess this might be a good one to use them. Because the mass attacks are uh, scary. Like. Uh, this is not, not good shit, you know?
another one of these too. Um, well, we have plus one, and then plus one starter. Oh, I don't know. Oh, that might be helpful.
Uh, so I guess my other people can't do anything. Okay, deal six dagger damage. Park it. Recover six HP. Okay. <laughs> oh, and I only have one light. Oh, fuck. Oh, it's not it. Oh, that's right. Oops, forgot it.
Oh my god. Finally. Okay. My god, are you alive over there? Poor Ho, she looks so ugly in that outfit. Ew, what the heck? Oh my god, ew, I hate it. Prioritizes the target with the least amount of gifts in hand. Okay, so I guess, okay. Um. Block die. Lose power. I have four times the number of gifts in the opponent's hand. Follow their allies have died. All resistance has changed to fatal. Okay. Uses a powerful combat page that deals significant damage and gives three copies of gift to its target before causing the user to self-destruct. 
The character dies after using that page. Well, that sucks. This character dies. Uh, if the friend is... Okay. If this character dies... Okay. On next thing. The character is killed before before it can self-destruct. The friend is spawned with 80% health. Okay. Does this one have a story?
Ooh, yikes. Okay. <laughs> Super. Oh. Oh, that sucks. Oh, that sucks. Okay. Great. This sucks. Okay. Mm -hmm. There has to be. Okay.
my god, do I have to keep get, getting rid of these cards? Is that what I'm supposed to do? Oh my, what the... Ew.
No.
Jeez Louise. Oh, was there no conversation for that one? Hmm? Was there no conversation for that one? Nope. Oh, wow. Uh, there was one for this one either. Oh, did you did you do a battle and I just like fell asleep and I didn't realize? Yeah. Oh wow, that's crazy. What did you fight for, Hode? Uh huh. What, what what was Hode fight again? It was the it was like a little girl with like little red monsters and then they exploded and turned into spiders. Well, not spiders, but it was uh, Laetitia, I think is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And then this one just goes, just goes to show my fucking like sleeping habits recently that I fucking conked out for that. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I was like, I was like, are you alive? No. And uh, then you didn't say anything. I wasn't. My, my mind was. I was like, okay, I guess he fell asleep. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Similar to a child in size, Owen and always maintaining a bright smile, a very, very adorable little kid. A very, very adorable little kid. Uh, they call me an adorable little kid because I am a small and lovely child. Uh, the kid comes from a place far, far away. And when the kid meets someone she likes, she gives them a gift made all by herself. The gift's content is a secret, though. This is another really, really important secret, but the kid has lots of talents. The kid has many friends, they, but they said she can't bring them here. She was so sad that she had to leave her dear friends behind, so she came up with a brilliant idea. If I cover up my friends nicely and make it look like a gift, everyone will be surprised, and then they'll all laugh together over my prank. Whoops, there goes the secret of the gift. I hope to may find lots of friends here too. The kid is shy, so the gift will be given in secret. Farewells are sad. I hope we can play more. And people here don't smile. They look that looks so gloomy. So this little lady has made a decision to stay here and never leave until laughter is restored to this place. I will be happy if everyone is pleased with my pr pranks. Uh, and like the idea is that the gifts that you give people are like um, human meat. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god, that's terrible. Yes. I mean, I'm laughing, but like... <laughs> but you're not allowed to open the gift. If you open the gift, then she's no longer your friend. Oh. <laughs> Please. Um... Oh my god, and then I was like... And then I get, she, you get the gift pages, and I guess you have to get rid of the gift pages, and... Yeah, but you figured it out without me. Still yeah. Game not that said, hard. It, well, somebody died, but you know what? Rest in peace. <laughs> Rest in peace, my dude. Okay. I guess we'll do Malkuts now. Let's see. Queen Bee. Queen Bee. Yeah. You're gonna be a little perturbed by this one. Oh no. Yeah, I mean, look at it. I'm tired of these. I'm so tired of these. <laughs> okay, we can do it. It's, it's just a very, like, gross-looking thing. Design that they came look up with, man. No, it looks exactly like that fairy one. Not the fairy one. The deer one. What do you mean by spores, Miss Malkuth? Those teeth and draws crush me. Want more, more drones to work for her. Don't inhale the spores. Yeah, the idea is that like, um, if this one's counter decreases all the way, then it'll basically turn uh, a random amount of clerks in your, in that section of your facility, into worker bees. That will then start killing everything else in your facility. 
Um, and it kind of sucks. Oh, if there are two or few worker bees alive at the start of the scene, inflict two spores on all librarians. So you get punished for killing these fuckers? I guess so. Yeah, that's what happened with the last one. You got punished but by it turning into like a spider. I had better cards. So I guess you just gotta kill her. My wrist is like spasming. Okay. The librarian dies while under the influence of the spores. On a worker bee next scene. <gasps> Use this page as a boost the aggression and loyalty of the library. Good shit, bro. Target the last foe that attacked the queen bee in the previous scene. The queen bee's HP follows the oh, It attacks her? Yes. Okay. Oh, cool, 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 cool. Its form appears to be an amalgamation of a gargantuan beehive and a bee. A cross section of the inside shows a darkish red surface with particles here and there, much like that of raw meat. The, se the segment that appears to be the face is heavily distorted. It has wings, but they lost their intended function of flight. The one eye that remains relatively intact shows pupillary movement as if to watch for approaching intruders. The abnormality always remains still, so it is assumed that it does not move. When certain conditions are met, it releases spores. It will generate billions of spores within a 20 meter, meter radius. The existence of life forms in its, in its vicinity seems to be one of the key requirements. When it did, there was no immediate change in the employees who, who inhaled the spores, and no anomalous signs could be detected on the examinations that followed. Once more time had passed, the employee experienced severe pain in their occipital load, lobe and abdomen. Then, after a certain period of time, their head dislodged from their body and a worker bee emerged from the separated body. It has been confirmed that the spores carry drone eggs that hatch inside a living host. Based on the findings of an autopsy done on an employee killed by the abnormality, we believe that the larva will subsist on any portion of the body, be it blood, organs, or fat. It will move freely around the body at this stage. When it becomes too large to move, it creates a cocoon near the intestines. The host feels extreme hunger at this stage, eating much more than usual. This cocoon moves upwards through the body as it grows, eventually damaging the arteries of the throat and the circuithroid with its jaws as it severs the host's head from the body. After this, it will emerge from the body, exacerbating the wound of the host further. That's fucking disgusting, bro. Excerpt from Counseling Log. Redacted had been telling me about his itchy neck for a while. He complained about indigestion, too. One time I saw him take a bunch of digestives. Who would have thought that it'd turn out to be such a serious issue? I never knew I'd be the one to witness that horrible moment. Omitted. Redacted and I were just chatting, but suddenly he stopped speaking. He was still scratching his neck. It was turning so red I was getting worried. Then his neck started to turn at such a strange angle. Right then and there I realized the severity of the situation. There was no way he could have been putting his neck that way on his own. It looks like someone was forcefully twisting his neck. And then I heard a zip, like the noise of shredding paper. A horn sound of something tearing. His head fell to the floor. I heard a dull thud. Then, as if enough hadn't happened already, something began to crawl out of his neck. Just like a butterfly emerging from a cocoon, tearing apart his headless body. The wings, the yellow trunk, the teeth that gnawed away at his body. It's something I never want to see again, a being I'd hate to describe as something alive. Omitted, it seemed to be aware of me somehow. 
but it looks like it didn't have any reason to attack at that moment. It picked up its cra his cranium and flew away, like a drone carrying honey. I can still hear the sound of its jaw rattling and its wings beating. Worker bee. Its appearance is clearly different from queen bees, other than its color. It is capable of flight, but can only hover about one meter above the ground. It lacks antennae or eyes. A long appendage that appears to be in, the, in an intestine drags behind its rear on the floor. Worker bees show only two forms of behavior, delivering nutrients to the, key, to the queen and proliferating. Upon encountering an employee, it uses its jaw to crush their head and then proceeds to inject a pupa into their body. Oh yeah, that is it. That is the grossest shit I've ever heard in my entire life. Thank you for that. No problem. Anytime. <laughs> Anytime except for when I'm asleep. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, anyway there. Over right there. And oh, because I was like, it's quiet. Too quiet. He hasn't bitched in a minute. What's up with that? <laughs> I don't hear him bitching about me. <laughs> I was I was out for like a full hour there, man. Yeah. Poor little guy. He was just so very tired. He was so tired. He worked so hard. Very busy. You know. A five to nine. Okay. On hit, Queen B recovers ten HP. That's fucked, bro. That's fucked. Hmm. That's not cool, bro. Uh, oh, yeah, that's why I did it that way.
Using pages with the same name will decrease the cost of a copy of that page the character currently owns by one. Oh, okay. Uh, mm. One hit, inflict one of three burn to the attacker. Gain a buff. I don't have any burn attacks though, so... On winning a clash, deal bonus stagger damage equals.
Oh crap, what does this mean? Oh shit. Oh man, I forgot. Or I didn't. Ugh. Just, oop. Oopsie babies.
Wow, that took some depth. Whoa. Yeah. I don't know. I, I accidentally messed up and, uh, you know, press a button before doing a turn, so. Oh, that kind of shit. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, I doubt. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna make it. Because, like, I got two staggered over here as well, so, oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't look good. And everybody's kind of low on HP at the moment, so... Librarian's HP is at 20% or lower, until 30% of the target's max HP. Then die.
Oh, what's happening? They're attacking her. Cool. I'm just gonna tell you, you win when the queen. So what do I do? You win when the queen bee dies. Yeah, that yeah, that's what I figured. So I just leave it alone and let them do their thing. Yeah. Okay. You can, yeah. Okay, because I was like, I'm, I'm what like, is what happening? What are you sitting here deliberating about? Oh, because I was confused. I was like, well, I don't understand what is happening. It, it, it tells you when. <laughs> The queen bee drops below 20% HP, the worker bees will attack it. That's what's happening. I was confused. I was Sweet. I suspect this one will not have a dialogue either. Oh, hey, Star of the City. Woo! Round of applause. Yay! The library is now a Star of the City. I try calling each star something beautiful. It's a nice sentiment, I guess. Onel 미트 스튜 먹는 것도 제대로 적었어. 정말 기억해 줬구나. 난 뭐든지 기억할 수 있으니까. 그러면 굳이 자꾸 기억하지 않아. 예. Yeah. 물론 기분 상하게 하려는 뜻은 아니야. Imagine looking forward to something else. Other than just your revenge. 어? 그럼 as something as simple as meat stew. 내 기억들이 완전하진 않아도 점차 옅어지는 게 느껴져. 이런 적은 처음이야. 지워야 할 기억들이 아직도 까마득하게 남았지만. 그래도 여러모로 축하해. 간절히 원하던 거잖아. 고마워. 그래서 이제는 다음이라는 걸 꿈꾸기 위해 이 종이에 적는 거야. 네가 말한 울타리. 그런 거지. 
꿈이라 롤랑, 너는 어때? 이곳에서 나가면 어떤 것부터 하고 싶어? 글쎄, 일단 해결사 일은 접을까 생각 중이야 여러모로 지쳤거든 그래? 네가 어떤 해결사였는지는 몰라도 곁에서 지켜본 바로는 적성에 맞아 보이는데 잘 싸우는 건 그렇다 쳐도 여러 상황에 대처하고 능숙하게 일을 받아 넘기는 걸 보면 네 말대로 꽤잘 나갔을 것 같아 <웃음> 그런 점이야말로 해결사의 일처럼 보이는 하긴 내가 생각해도 해결사만큼 잘 맞는 일은 없을 것 같다 그래도 이제는 좀 쉬고 싶어 이 정도가 적당해 다른 사람을 위해서 누군가의 피를 보는 일에 그래서 어떤 일을 하고 싶어? 그렇게 집요하게 물어봐도 말이지 이곳의 일이 끝난다면 아 정말 생각 안 나네 정 없으면 내 일을 도와줄래? 이번에는 정식으로 고용할게 일에 맞는 보스도 지급해 줄수 있어 어떤 일인데? 뭐겠어 이 종이에 적은 것들이지 아까도 말했지만 피를 보는 일들은 아니야 나도 피를 보는 건 이제 충분해 네 말대로 다음이라는 걸 생각해보니 떠오르는 게 자유더라고 복수를 잃은 후에 자유를 얻고 별탈 없이 세상을 돌아다니면 좋겠다 싶었어 그래도 무사히 여행을 마치도록 호위해달라는 건 무슨 소리야 내몸 정도는 스스로 지킬 수 있어 말동무나 해주면 돼 지금까지 온 손님을 보니 너보다 잘 맞을 것 같은 친구는 없을 것 같아서 친구인가? 내 일방적인 착각인가? 내가 아는 사람은 정말 적거든 그몇 없는 사람들조차 못볼 꼴만 봐야 했지 서로 정해진 배역을 무대 위에서 연기할 뿐이었으니까 그들에게 결국 나는 대본을 읊기 위한 도구이자 기계 그 이상 그 이하도 아니었어 사사들, 아니 세피라와 직원들 말이구나 다른 곳에서 다른 형태로 만났다면 동료가 됐을 수는 있겠네 그래서 어떻게 생각해? 응? 이곳의 일이 끝난 후 말이야 아, 그 이야기는 긍정적으로 검토해볼게 나쁘지는 않겠어 다 내려놓고 세상을 돌아다녀 보는 것도 Stars of the city, those who shine brightest in the sky. Their light illuminates all who live below, who bask in that brilliance to, and try to capture it for themselves. One cannot escape them, for they will always be up there in the sky, serving as a permanent reminder of their place is... <coughs> serving as a permanent reminder of where their place is. On the ground. Stars of the city are sufficiently influential as to influence social structures. Oh, yeah, you got Vina. Oh, sorry. I didn't know it was gonna go. Okay, finish. Yeah. <laughs> uh, as to influence social structures of the city, people flock to them, latch onto them, hope to become part of them, or otherwise hope to avoid them at all costs. The most powerful and dangerous groups outside of the outside of the wings. But most importantly, they are capable of standing on their own within the city, independent of its designs. They are the most free, trying to achieve meaning through escaping the confines of the city that defines everyone. If they do not escape, they are simply another evolution of the city, and eventually they fall back down to the ground just like the wings. May the city stay mesmerized in its sweet dream, no matter how brightly the stars may shine. The library has now been exalted as one such star, but Roland and Angela are not terribly concerned about it. This was to be expected eventually, and what is more important is Angela's progress towards becoming human. She is finally forgetting some of the endless memories of torment which haunted her, and it prompts her to do something Roland once suggested, make a list of things to do once she attains her freedom. To look forward, instead of always looking back. To dream. She wants to travel around the world without worries. But she doesn't want to do it alone, she wants a companion, so she invites Roland to come with her. Roland, who has no plans for after his duty serving Angela is complete, or rather, after he achieves his revenge. 
Roland, who has no dreams, no aspirations, who held no attachment or value to his life, who feels that it is meaningless after what he lost. Angela is giving him the possibility for new meaning so that he can also move forward without looking back, and furthermore, she now thinks of him as a friend, a designation she has never given to everyone else, anyone else, for she has never had amicable relationships with others prior to Roland, who also took some work on that front due to how adversarial she was in the beginning, lopping his limbs off for being slightly impertinent and flippant. But she doesn't want to harm anyone anymore. The library didn't just harm people regularly like Lobotomy Corporation. It did so discriminantly. Angela would peer into their life stories and then decide, by choice, that she would turn them into books rather than let them leave freely or shoo them away. Angela is realizing that the freedom she seeks also includes the freedom to not harm others. Roland neither accepts nor declines this invitation, though. While both are in between staying caged by their past and moving forward, Angela is at least beginning to walk the path to freedom, to her freedom. Roland sees that path, but he has yet to start walking it. For him, though, it's not so much about whether or not the path is difficult, or better than that which he is currently walking. It's about whether or not he deserves to walk that path, and currently he is still trying to come to grips with the will to live, when that was lost alongside Angelica. At the very least, he does think it sounds nice to leave the past behind and move forward, letting go of all woes and just wandering the world. The only other point worth mentioning is that Angela has a misconception about her other acquaintances, the patient librarians and their subordinate librarians. I haven't mentioned it before, but Angela doesn't receive the guests, and Roland doesn't receive them on his own. There are ten floors of the library, blah 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 blah. Apart from Roland, who is the patron of the floor of general works, blah blah blah, Sefi Rowe. Uh, the regular librarians decides their character. Angela thinks that the patron librarians see her as merely a tool and a machine built to recite the scripts. Nothing more, nothing less. Certainly, they have an adversarial relationship. Say they see her as naught but a machine built for a singular purpose is entirely projection. At one point they may have, and they certainly didn't understand her perspective, but following the creation of the library, they had no choice but to recognize that Angela is more than the puppet she was built for. For <clears throat> is more than the purpose she was built for. However, they will be explored in more depth later, even if they present to anyone who has played the game a glaring gap in my recounting of the plot so, thus far. There, there you go. 여기는 음. 해스드랑 다른 냄새를 풍기는데? 홍차 냄이란다. 음, 커피랑은 다르게 좋은 향이구만. 그렇단다. 파란머리 도련님은 we stand, Bina. 제대로 된 홍차 맛을 모를 테지. 이곳은 다른 층과 다르게 위압감이 느껴져 철학이라는 주제랑 뭔가 맞네. 무슨 말 하는지도 모르겠고 말도 무겁고. <웃음> 네가 보는 도서관은 어떠니? 내가 보는 도서관? 사람들의 피를 마시는 죽음의 공간인지, 정보를 축적한 지식의 첨탑인지, 혹은. 새로운 삶을 위한 방주일지. 흠, 내가 본 도서관은 투기장? 엔젤라든 사서든 각자 원하는 것을 어떻게든 쟁취하려는 곳이야. 그래서 굉장히 치열하지. 피가 튀고. Interpretation varies based on perspective. 그렇다면 너에게 있어 도서관은 어떤 곳이니? 나한테는 뭐 감옥이지. 그렇게 보이지 않는구나. 넌 기회를 잡으려 하고 있어. 당연히 여기서 나갈 기회를 잡아야지. 네가 그렇다면 그런 것이겠지. 뭐야 넌 대체? Stop being so coy, Roland. <laughs> Stop lying to her. She sees through you. <laughs> I see through you. It's very easy to read. <laughs> 첫 번째 삶에서 어떤 존재였는지가 궁금한 것이구나. I mean, it's easier to read when I've basically been telling you that there's more going on <laughs> this entire time. Yeah, she's like, get the fuck out. Yeah.
Yes, Bina was an arbiter of the head. The people who enforce the head's rules if you do not um, follow them. Uh, in other words, effectively the most powerful force in the city. Wild, huh? The arbitrators of the rules. I feel like... Uh... Hmm. I didn't want to say. Um, I was gonna say something, but it just flew off of the wind. I feel like. Uh, she is also the one who took down the uh research facility that predated Lobotomy Corporation. Uh, oh, okay, that's interesting. Yes. And now she's here. <laughs> yes, she was. Funny. Um, after Hode snitched to the head, Bina was the one who was called in to destroy the facility, um, and to do so, she for she first forced uh, Hesed to release all of the abnormalities that they had uh, in, in custody so, to run amok and, and kill everyone in the facility. Um, and then her and five, I think it was five, it might have been a little less than that, Claws participated in that slaughter. Um, and Gabura, who was the Red Mist mm. at the time, uh, effectively on her own, suppressed uh, all of the abnormalities, killed the Claws, and then uh, very nearly killed Bina as well before succumbing to death herself uh but by that point in time the only people left alive were uh ian the the person who becomes the manager of lobotomy corporation and his assistant what a bad what a what a bad bitch yeah and the then they is. and then they used the knowledge that bina had as an arbiter to found Lobotomy Corporation such that it was out of sight from the head that they so they wouldn't get caught. Mm. Um, as far as Library of Ruina goes, you'll notice uh, something interesting about her floor, and that is that she's not playable right now. <laughs> yeah. You, you can play her floor with no abnormality pages, which, why would you do so at this point? Let's be fucking real. Uh, and three librarians, but not her. She will not participate. <laughs> she, she needs some to rest. <laughs> yeah. She, she's got some, uh, priorities, so to speak. Yeah, um, I want to say, yeah, it, it's really nice to see, um, uh, what's her name? Oh my god, the words are failing me right now. Um, the main character, the girl. Angela? Yes, Angela. Dear lord. It's, it's really, <laughs> it's really nice to see Angela kind of like loosen up a little bit and be a little vulnerable, um, talking about like what, what, what she wants. And, um, and, and that she does want a companion and she is willing to admit like yeah and you know I, I would like you to be my companion and uh because that must be really hard for her you know here she has been alive for like what hundreds maybe thousands right of uh, hundreds she or has experienced years? a period of time uh akin to or in in the rough amount of a million years. Oof, I thought it was like thousands. Okay, a million years. And um, she's just probably never been able to do that before. So this is like a, a new experience for her. She, so, like, she uh, effectively experienced um, an even worse uh, version of the warp train. Wherein she was not just uh, alive and, and unable to die for said million years um mm -hmm. but 
the experience she had during that period of time was one of repetition and one of her um, deliberately guiding people towards death. Yeah, like, I, I can't imagine um, how painful that is, like, doing that over and over again. And, like, like of course, you, you would never want to be close to somebody. And you you would probably, I don't know, this might be going a little too deep into it, but you'd probably be like, well, I'm just undeserving of uh, a better life or, like, a life of happiness, you well, know? She has never had the perspective of being undeserving. <laughs> mm -hmm. She... She has, if anything, like felt she it. has been owed such a thing. And mm -hmm. so that is what her entire uh, purpose has been for the... Right. And hasn't in, her in, entire in the, purpose been revenge? It, yes, revenge. And that revenge entails uh, a, attaining uh, a, a normal life to live. Mm-hmm. Because to me, it's like you seek your revenge and then you uh, kind of live in peace in your normal life afterwards. That's kind of like how I would see it. But like, you know, but 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 sometimes like for some people, well, like uh, she had no plans well, like, after like, the fact, though, yeah. she until now, yeah. she uh, yeah. her entire goal was uh, become human. And then what? <laughs> Yeah. But now she's learning to think beyond the immediate. Um, and then furthermore, while her pain may be substantial, um, it is not really her place to say that it is more substantial than anybody else's. Because as was discussed in after that, after the Ketter battle, after the Pinocchio battle, um, just because it, you're you cannot understand other people's pain just as they cannot understand yours. You have to verbalize and, and, and empathize in order to truly understand what's going on. Um, yeah. You have to, like, and, you have to live a human experience, right? In and, order to kind of understand and she had been entirely unwilling up to this point to adequately engage with other people's suffering. Mm -hmm. uh, she has been entirely focused on her own suffering and how it, for her it is of so, such more grandiose substance than that which other people are have gone through that uh it, it, their experiences are, are negligible but the issue is is that the uh the, pr the extent of the suffering is not so much beholden to the literal events that occurred as it is the perception of the person who experienced them. Right. It's like it's different for everybody. Yeah. yeah. And so like that's um that that like that that would also be um Yeah, kinda kinda of being stuck in your ego a little bit as well. Just like only focusing like on, on kind of like your pain and letting it eat you up inside and kind of like learning to let go of your ego and not being so stuck in your ego can like really help you you know empathize with other people in your surroundings you know like like you were saying so yeah that checks out yeah I, I, I mean I, I I like that a lot I like that that uh, this game is telling that journey and telling that story because I think it's important for a lot of people you know to hear that because a lot of people have suffered in their life and um, you know have, have gone through some painful things and um, I, I think we all we all you know deserve some semblance of happiness right 
and um, sometimes it, it 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 can be just as simple as like making a list of things like we would like to do in the future that can like uh, make us see like a like a whole a whole new side of like uh, our potential life and how much better it could be, you know. All right, well, I'm gonna... I will be the one to tell you we're fucking stopping here. <laughs> yes, know, as opposed to I'm the other way around. Because I... Whoo! I need to fucking pass out, bro! <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, whenever... Yeah, whenever you were talking, I was kind of dozing off a little bit. Yeah, I... <laughs> when I woke back up after that, like, one hour nap, I've been, like awake but very very cognizant of the fact that i could easily just pass out again <laughs> um, okay uh, well, at least we at least we got what, three out of the way well, yes and you'll see that this is you're able to do the final battle for the floor of history uh -oh. which is called the uh -oh. realization battle uh and then subsequently you'll be able to do that for um, Yasad, Hod, and, and Nesak. Um, uh -oh. which is what you're going to want to do, uh, it, probably. <laughs> I'm not sure if it'll necessarily be, like, uh, too difficult, so to speak. Um, mm -hmm. but the, doing so will make the, uh, even the early start of the city battles significantly easier to have a fully realized floor okay okay um, yeah there you got okay. and, and of course you still got to do another set of battles for these chuckle fucks yeah <clears throat> you've uh, you've at least got two to do for Kibura just because we haven't done any for her so far <laughs> No, I was like, let me do the. I was like, let me do the so, bottom ones first, this, and then I'll do the top, this, the other ones. <laughs> well, you did one for Hassad. Uh Because this, I like him. <laughs> this entire time, I've been making reference to how she's like the, a Giga Chad, <laughs> the Red Mist, and then you just have like no context for it because you've had none of her conversations. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Whenever, whenever we first met her, I was like, oh my god, she's my type. Step on me, please. Step on me harder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she is. She is a mommy, you know. So like, yeah. <laughs> but but when I'm scared dummy, of her floor, dummy. I don't know what to expect. I'm scared. Dommy mommy. <laughs> Dommy mommy, yes. <laughs> uh, I mean, to be fair, she was the uh, disciplinary department in Lobotomy oh. Corporation. In other words, the department that was most responsible for suppression of escaping abnormalities. <laughs> yeah, so, it, 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 to suppress all of them? Man, what a babe. Her, her, a there are certainly some gimmicks to her fights. Um, mm -hmm. but they definitely dominantly entail, uh, uh, fighting <laughs> as opposed to Hesed's are a lot more puzzle, puzzle like, uh, Gabura's are a lot more fucking beat some shit up type. <laughs> I'm not ready, but I'm ready, but okay. Um, there are definitely, it. I can do it. there are definitely gimmicks to a couple of them though. Which are, I just need um, I just need awful. you to be nice to me. Uh, to, I honestly I probably will be nice to you for the first one because <laughs> the first one is like oh, really fucking annoying. <laughs> okay, because I'm gonna cry. Yeah. Well, uh, in any case, that's that's for next time. The the, the buys and the laters and the, the snore snores off to sleepies. Bye.